What was that? Okay, listen, I'm going to get into all the hype this chapter offered, but first I need to rant because this seriously bugged the hell out of me. Last chapter, Krillin was gonna finally going to get some action and fight Yumba. Then, as they were about to start fighting, they decide to instead watch Gohan fight 7-3. Piccolo, Krillin, and the villains were just standing there watching them fight. What the f***? I had so much hope this time around. Toyotaro was going to allow multiple fights to be happening at the same time, letting Piccolo and Gohan fight 7-3, while Krillin fights Yumba. But nope, in typical Dragon Ball fashion, the Z Fighters again are standing on the sidelines watching the main fight. Why can't Dragon Ball do what other animes do so well? Seriously, all they know how to do is develop Vegeta and Goku, while everyone else just gets completely shafted. I'm not asking for much, just give the Z Fighters some love too. Otherwise, just stop writing them into the story. It hurts so much seeing them be treated like this. <sighs> okay, let's move on. Gohan was getting some serious love this chapter, just bodying 7-3. I mean, it wasn't even close. Gohan was simply on another level and had some great panels. You could just feel how fast Gohan was moving. This is something I can't wait to get animated as I feel it will do all of these panels more justice as they will have more breathing room to expand the fights. Also, not gonna lie, Gohan with that two finger blast thing right behind 7-3 was pretty awesome moment too. Just again, he was wasting absolutely no time and just putting in work, not giving the opponent a second to breathe. So 7-3 was utilizing Piccolo's moves, which was clearly not working against Gohan. And this is when we get the huge reveal that the other two circles on his head are not just decorations. So it definitely looks like we were all wrong here. 7-3 can store three users' abilities in himself at a time and can switch them freely. Well, guess what? Looks like they had contingency plans in place and 7-3 copied Moro's powers. So the tide completely shifted and now the Z Fighters are losing all of their energy due to Moro's energy absorbing powers. So now Beezlebub and Yumba step in and start fighting the four of them and they can't put up much of a fight since their energy is depleting. Piccolo mentions even if they die, Goku and Vegeta will save the day. Just why? Why can't any of the Z Fighters just get a win for once? Krillin, Piccolo, any of them. Just why? So Moro overhears this and now wants Goku and Vegeta to get stronger so he can absorb even more energy from them. Because in Dragon Ball, whenever we leave Goku alone to train and get stronger, it usually ends really, really well for the villain. So Moro's guys are heading back and leaving them all alone and said they would be back in about 20 days. But Jacko tricked them and convinced them it would take an extra cycle. And so the translation is they now have two months until they can come back. So I have mixed feelings on this because we have seen this time and time again in Dragon Ball. So whenever a threat shows up, and the villain is just so strong, he allows the Z Fighters to train and get stronger themselves. This always eventually seals the villain's fate and he inevitably loses. I'm looking at you, Cell. So on the positive side, maybe, just maybe, they are actually going to let Krillin, Piccolo, and the others train and develop some new power-ups and techniques. But let's be real, no, they won't because their names aren't Goku or Vegeta. And so now I'm back on this rant again, because why waste all this time building up the Z Fighters and bring them into the fold when you just so quickly brush them aside to wait and rely on Goku and Vegeta again? <sighs> oh, by the way, Miris is Definitely a former angel. We just got confirmation from Whis talking to the Grand Priest, wanting to clarify some angel laws, and Grand Priest brings up Miris. It looks like 
suspicions were definitely right, as a lot of people were calling it saying Miris was a fallen angel. And now if I had to guess, he might be getting into some serious trouble helping Goku. As Whis put it himself, angels are not supposed to side with good or evil. So this could be very interesting how this plays out moving forward. I am curious though, because Whis also trained Goku, but maybe he purposely never taught him Ultra Instinct, because maybe he's not allowed to. Maybe beings can learn it, but they got to accomplish it on their own, which is basically impossible without having someone who knows what it even is. So anyway, what did you guys think about the chapter? Were you pissed the Z Fighters got shafted again? And what do you think Weez wants to discuss with the Grand Priest? Let me know in the comments below and consider hitting the subscribe button. Other than that, I'll see you guys later.